Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Monday morning and I've been up for a while. I have a bunch of things I want to film today that I wanted to film yesterday, but the weekend kind of got away from me and then there was just the terrible news about Kobe Bryant and his daughter and all the other passengers on his helicopter that unfortunately crashed and I'm shocked by how much this whole tragedy is affecting me. It's just one of those things that is so incredibly tragic and shocking and unexpected. I'm not the biggest sports fan, but like most people, I knew who Kobe Bryant was and there's just so much about this accident that really I think has affected a lot of people and whether it affects you or not, whether you express that or not, I think it's it's totally okay. I don't think you have to be affected by it. I don't think you have to speak out about it. I don't think you have to feel bad if you feel nothing about it. It's just, you know, death and tragedy really hits people in different ways and for some reason this, this one has me thinking. It really has me thinking and um, I don't know. This morning I just wanted to come on, film a get ready with me. I have a few new products to try um, and I just wanted to keep it really simple, really casual and just kind of chit chat and unload some of the thoughts that are in my brain as I'm like processing this, this really terrible, terrible event. I, I don't know if this is appropriate. I don't know if this is inappropriate. I just, there's a lot in my heart. So yesterday I was filming a video and uh, when I was done, my boyfriend yelled to me from the other room. He's like, Kobe Bryant just died in a helicopter crash. And I was like, what? No way. I didn't believe him. But like, why would he make that up? Why would anybody make that up? And then all the news began to unfold and all the speculation and reports that were confirmed and unconfirmed and just so much misinformation was being spread. His whole family was on board. His wife was on board. His agent was on board. All his daughters were on board. Just the craziest things. And that's where social media gets kind of scary because you really don't know what to believe. I think it was ABC who reported that all of his daughters had been on board with him. Um, and that was obviously misinformation. So shame on ABC because the second they let that out, it just spread like wildfire. And and oh my gosh, I remember reading that. We were in the car and I read that in a tweet. Someone had said that ABC confirmed that all of his daughters were on board and my whole body just like, this like wave went through it. I couldn't even fathom that actually being the case and how his wife must feel. Now mind you, his wife is dealing with an equally as terrible tragedy right now, but I mean, the thought to lose your whole entire family, all your kids and your husband, that was just too much. So I mean, I'm grateful that wasn't the case. Doesn't make this any less awful, but shame on ABC and shame on people for, you know, retweeting things and, and posting things that are just inaccurate. So anyway, it just left me feeling very somber and just heartbroken for this family and all the other families involved. Like, not only is it the loss of life, but it's in such a quick, fast and shocking, tragic manner. Like. There's just so much to process, so I don't know. You can tell a lot of people are really, really affected by this story. And when these kinds of things happen, I never know if I want to say anything, if I just want to stay quiet. Because, you know, you see people posting all the time and you don't know if maybe you should or if you even want to. Many times I'll just kind of process whatever's going on internally and, and privately, but other times stories just completely rock your world and you don't know what else to do, but speak about it or post about it so I mean I didn't have anything crazy to share it but then I saw this quote that just really resonated with me it was spot on kind of the way that I was feeling and it said the whole world just shifted off the strength of one human your life is an extraordinary opportunity never ever forget that and it's just so true life is an opportunity to simply have a life is a gift what does Gary Vee always say it's like one trillion to one is how many sperm make it to <laughs> to actually be developed into humans it's insane. It's such a gift. And when something like this happens, it makes you realize how truly fragile and special life is. And and it's weird because it definitely prompted me to, you know, reach out to my loved ones or, or send messages to people. I also just wanted to be alone, which is so strange. Like sometimes death just makes me want to be by myself. Like I 
I don't really want to engage in conversation. I don't really want to talk about it or I do want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about anything else. I have a really hard time like processing those emotions. And last night I just, I felt that more than ever before. I was a little snappy. I was a little irritable and it was the exact opposite of what I wanted to be doing. But it's really interesting. You realize that that's what death does sometimes. You know, you can't really explain it. My heart really goes out to his wife and his daughters and their family and, and everyone else involved. And I'm sure as this develops and more information comes out, it'll just continue to be just as sad. Today is a weird day. I woke up really early and my chest kind of hurt. I don't know why I woke up with like a, a slight chest pain, probably stress. Um, I got up, did a little part of my morning routine. I just wrote a little bit and then I um, went for a walk. I love, okay, I put way too much bronzer. Um, damn it. I've been making it a point to go for more walks throughout the week just because it's nice to get fresh air. It's a little bit of exercise, but this morning I just, I really felt the need to get up and go out and go for a walk. So I walked down to the lake and was listening to a couple of my favorite podcasts along the way and just like breathing, you know, recognizing life, just soaking in life for a minute and quiet before the day got started. Then I got back home, took a shower, made breakfast, made some tea, still drinking my tea. I drink my coffee and tea so, so slow in the morning. It takes me literally hours to finish one cup. My boyfriend eventually woke up. He was cute this morning and he was like, it feels like like Kobe hangover day. And I'm like, that's the perfect way to explain it. Everyone just has this like heavy feeling about what's happened. And um, it's so crazy to me. I always used to wonder this when I was little because my, my parents would always be like, oh my gosh, so-and-so died, so-and-so passed away, this actor, this singer, this athlete. And we didn't know who they were because we didn't grow up with them. And I always wondered what it would be like one day when the people that we grew up watching passed away and this is definitely not the first it certainly won't be the last but for some reason this is definitely one of the most difficult to process quick side note i got this maybelline mascara the lash sensational i've never tried it i'm gonna open up and test it today i usually love maybelline mascaras i don't think i've ever tried one that i hated i have high hopes for this but anyway um I think when something like this happens, what it really does is make you realize how short life is. I think that's the most important takeaway. And I think a lot of people are feeling it, like all kinds of people. And that's okay. I think it's really okay to be feeling that and, and talking about it. Ooh, I usually don't care for bristles like this, like short little plastic ones, but we'll see. Um, oh, I really like this so far. I didn't want to spend this whole video talking about that, but that's really what's on my mind today. It's so hard to think of anything else. I mean, I had to get ready. I have things to do today. Life goes on. It's the saddest, weirdest part about death. I don't know. I just really feel for for everyone involved and just uh, the thoughts that are running through my mind. And as someone who hates to fly, like, I just don't like airplanes. I've never been in a helicopter. I really have no desire to go in a helicopter, but it's all pretty synonymous to me. Any kind of air travel really is frightening and it's one of my biggest fears and uh, it's just a lot it's one of those things that's obviously really uniting people and bringing people together and that's sometimes it takes those things to do that you know it takes tragedy it takes death to unveil love i really didn't want to make this video all about makeup and all that because it seems so irrelevant today but a quick side note this mascara is it's really good. I like it a lot. I'm really, really happy with what it's doing to my lashes. I'm going to do one more coat. I don't have anywhere crazy to be today, so... Oh, I forgot my under eye powder. So I'm not doing anything too crazy with my look, but... One of my New Year's resolutions was to get up every day, get dressed, and put makeup on. Well, makeup wasn't a total necessity, but... The days that I put makeup on, I do feel a little better. In other news... I feel like it's been a really interesting January. There's been quite a bit of like pop culture news. The whole royal situation, that has been so crazy and fascinating to follow. I kind of have mixed feelings on that and what's right or wrong at the end of the day. It's not my life, it's not my family, I have no idea what's going through their heads. But Meghan and Harry leaving the royal family was definitely a shocking announcement and I'm curious to see how that's all gonna 
play out and where they end up moving and how their life unfolds from here but just goes to show you like the world could be talking about one thing every single minute of every single day and then something awful like this happens and it just brings you back to reality like okay what is actually important taylor swift's netflix documentary is coming out at the end of the week and i'm so excited to watch it i was a huge taylor fan back in like 2008 just in the midst of the love story era that was kind of the album that really got me into taylor so i've always had respect for her and followed her career i fell off a little bit during like the 1989 years but lover her lover album just brought me back full force this summer i was so engulfed in that album it was the only thing i played at so much so that at the end of the year my spotify recap was like you listen to basically only taylor swift this year but that makes me even more excited for this documentary you know i'm trying to grow out my hair i'm trying to take better care of it i started taking more vitamins and using new products and um i watched it yesterday so this is day two but it has to last me until Thursday when I'm getting it dyed, so I won't be washing it again until then. So that's really it. That's just what's kind of on my heart and mind today. And I don't know, I just felt like filming while I got ready and, and kind of expressing some of the things that I'm feeling that I think a lot of people really are feeling right now. And it just sucks. It's just a really weird, sad, wake up call kind of feeling. And I'm definitely taking this as an opportunity to try and do better in my life and be better to the people in my life and be better to myself and just live every single day because you really never know when or how your life could end and it's an awful thing to think about i think that's why i never really did think like that because i don't want to think about that 24 7 but it's so true um maybe not thinking about it but just living like it if you're feeling a little hurt by this and, and really upset, just know that I am too and there are a lot of people in this country, in this world, that are feeling the same. So I think it's okay to feel that way and I think the shock and the sadness will definitely flow through and, and we'll move on to another stage, but I think Kobe, even after death, is teaching people something, you know? There's something to be learned from this whole experience. And I don't know, that's all I really wanna say about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I am, I'm sorry if it upset anybody. I'm sorry if it seemed really left field, but it was just what I felt like doing today. Initially, I had wanted to film a video featuring this Becca bronzer and this new mascara. So I thought that throwing them into this video would be sufficient enough. Quick note before I sign off, I've been using this for about a week now. I needed a new bronzer. I got this one from Octoly. Um, it is the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Bronzed Bondi, and it's amazing. I love it so, so much. It's the perfect bronze for me this time of year. It has a little hint of shimmer the lash sensational this was the first time using this today and so far so good i'm really really digging these results this has been in rotation and this is going to be as well i'm working on a couple more videos this week and just getting back into the regularly scheduled programming so thank you guys so much for watching and letting me open up my heart a little bit be sure to text somebody that you love hug somebody that you love and don't forget that life is really really short i'll see you in my next one